And you mentioned how comparisonitis was something that you struggle with over the years. How far along your journey, when along your journey specifically, did you realize that you had a problem with this? And then how did you go about unraveling it and start to deeply love yourself and and work yourself out of that hole? Mm, My gosh, it's been a journey. It really kicked off for me when I was, uh, I mean, I've, I've done it for as, as long as I can remember. I remember being in primary school and comparing myself. I remember thinking, why don't, why don't I like the same things the other girls like? Why don't I love netball? Like the other girls love netball. They, you know, I don't fit in, you know, I don't fit in. And, um, I loved dancing and performing and there was just me and one other girl that liked doing that, but everyone else liked netball and sport and, you know, I did it, but I was like, but why, why can't I be like them? Why can't I look like them? Why can't, and you know, I'd want to be like them. The girls that got the attention from the boys, why can't I be like them? So it started in primary school and then it exacerbated in high school. And then when I moved to Paris, when I was 20 years old, I was uh, dancing at the Moulin Rouge in Paris for a year. That's when it got really severe, really bad. And that's when I realized that this isn't, this isn't really normal. It's not ideal, but I didn't do anything about it. I just kept on going. I just kept on trying to shrink my body to look like other people. I just kept on pushing. And it wasn't until 2010 when I hit rock bottom, which we've spoken about before, and I ended up in hospital. And that's when I realized that the way I was living my life, my beliefs, everything needed to change. That was my rock bottom moment for me in hospital with a whole host of physical health issues and also mental health issues from depression and anxiety and panic attacks. So that was kind of like my light bulb, something needs to shift. And from there, that's when I started to become aware of these negative toxic habits and thoughts and beliefs that I had and made it my absolute mission to work on them to heal them because I realize that we're here on earth to evolve and to grow. That's why we're here. And I could either take the path of ignorance and close all the textbooks and never learn and grow and just live this simple unconscious life, or I could dive headfirst. And I chose to dive head first into it and became obsessed with uh, psychology and understanding why we do the things we do in human behavior and uh, spirituality. And I just dove head first into it all. And I'm still on that journey and I'm, you know, I'm going to be for the rest of my life. I'm committed to growing. I'm committed to learning. I'm committed to being the best version of myself and unlocking my full potential. And supporting myself along this path. And Melissa, what do you think it is about you when you hit rock bottom that you decided to pivot and grow from that situation rather than wallow and and maybe even fall deep deeper into the mental health issues and stuff like that? Was it something that's in your genes? Was there somebody that, you know, you connected with at the right time that kind of pushed you and nudged you in the right direction? What what brought you out of that? I think a combination of things, the biggest one being I was so sick and tired of being sick and tired. (laughs) I was so over it. I was so exhausted. I had completely just like hands in the air. I'm like, this is, I'm done. Like I'm done suffering. I was so exhausted from suffering. And I thought, surely God didn't put me here on earth to suffer. Surely he didn't say, I'm going to put Melissa Ambrosini on earth to suffer. Like surely that wasn't his intention. And yes, there was, um, I did meet some people around that time just before I ended up in hospital. I started this thing called yoga and meditation. And I just attended like my first couple of classes and, um, 
No, I'd done yoga before that. I'd, I'd definitely done yoga before that, but I'd started kundalini yoga just before that. And I'd met these couple of people who became my friends and they showed me that there was another way to live. And I'd never been exposed to this before, like this healthy way to live where, you know, they were drinking green smoothies and they were happy and they spoke about abundance and they, they told each other they loved each other and they meditated and they did yoga. And I was like, what is this world? Like I'd only known a world of cocktails and late nights and partying. And I was like, wow, I could have friends that don't do that. Like, this is amazing. So I was exposed to that. And then I, in hospital, one of those people that I just met previously, like a few months before, gave me a book that changed my life. And that was Louise Hayes, You Can Heal Your Life. And I read that book and just light bulbs went off. And I thought, oh my goodness, how have I not known this before? And I wanted, I knew in that moment that I wanted to write a book that had that same impact on people. And it's so beautiful because I share that in my first book, Mastering Your Mean Girl. And people come up to me and they say, your book was my Louise Hay. And I think, oh, wow, that's just so beautiful and so powerful. So yeah, there was a combination of things. Those those couple of things, like just being so tired of um, suffering and and having those people that showed me there was another way to live and and that book. And, you know, a willingness and a determination within myself, I was just ready, you know. And I also think, you know, my parents, my my dad is an entrepreneur um, and he's, you know, people say to me, how have you achieved all that you've achieved in your life? You've achieved so many things. You're so organized. You're so determined. Like, how have you done it all? And it's, it is that part of me is in my genes. I'm, you know, it's not something I've ever struggled with. I have friends that are just, that just really struggle with getting organized and getting things done and writing that first ebook and, you know, they look at me and they think, you just wrote a book in a month? Like, what the hell? And I think for me, it's just always been in my genes. Um, in Ayurveda, I'm a pitter. And in human design, I'm a generator, which is like that go-getting type of personality. So I had that within me as well. 